All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations. Uh, in another video, we've talked about how to solve linear equations, but now we're gonna look at quadratics. Um, now, some of these techniques will also apply to a higher degree polynomial equations, uh, but higher degree polynomial equations have many more complications. So we will look at one very simple example where it will apply to higher order equations but most of these examples are just quadratics. Now, in order to solve quadratic equations and indeed any higher order problems, we are relying on a property called the zero product property. And that is if two things multiply together, A times B, and they equal zero, then either the A is equal to zero or the B is equal to zero. Um, now, this is going to be essential uh, when we solve quadratic equations, one side of our equation has to be zero. And so we're going to combine everything on, on the other side of the equation and then deal with it from there. We can factor it, and then we have this zero product property we can fall back on. Factoring does not mean anything if there is not a zero on the other side of the equation. So if it's equal to one, uh, one times uh, one could be one or two times a half could be one, or negative one times negative one could be equal to one. It, we have no way of knowing what the value of the factors are if the other side of the equation is not zero. Only when one side is zero can, we, can any of this actually work. All right, so that's very important, and that's actually commonly forgotten um, unless you do a lot of this. Now, let's look at the general steps for our process. So if you have terms on both sides of the equation, then you need to simplify and combine like terms. Um, and then uh, if they're only on one side of the equation, you still need to simplify. But if they're on two sides of the equation, simplify and then move all of the terms to one side, um, adding or subtracting using your addition and, uh, properties, for instance in order to move everything over to one side so that one side is zero and then one side has all the other non-zero terms. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're going to factor because our zero product property requires things to be multiplying each other, not adding, each other, adding to each other. So we're gonna factor. And then from there, we can apply the zero product property and set each factor separately to zero. Now, um, not every factor is going to be possibly equal to zero. If you factor out a constant, for instance, you can't set three equal to zero. You can ignore that. But anything that has an X in it, you can set equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve. And what we want is we want to have everything factored into linear terms so that it's very easy to solve when we take them apart. And then the set of solutions for that equation will be the set of all the values we found from each one of the factors. So we'll start um, with some simple ones that are already in factored form, and then we'll work our way back up the list to longer and longer problems. In this case, uh, we already have it in factored form, and everything is already set equal to zero. So uh, we're going to set our first factor, x plus 3, equal to zero. And if you subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, you get x by itself, so that x is equal to negative 3. And then you set the second factor equal to zero. And then again, you move the one over to the other side by adding it to both sides. And then you divide by two and you get X is equal to one half. So we've set each factor equal to zero because if one of these is zero, then the whole thing is zero. And so there's two possible values of X that will make this expression true. And so our set of solutions in set notation is negative three and one half. Um, now, everyone doesn't necessarily insist on using set notation, but some professors will, and so you should be aware of what that means. Now, this is an example of a cubic equation. It has three copies of the variable b, but because it's already in factored form, I can still use this technique to solve it, but again, if they are, if any one of these factors is zero, the whole thing will be zero. So I take out the first factor, I set it equal to zero, I get a solution. 
I take the second factor, I set it equal to zero, I get a second solution. And I set the third factor equal to zero, and then I get a third solution. And so my solution set is one, negative two, three. So there's three ways for this equation to become zero. Now let's look at an example where it's not yet in factored form. So in this case, uh, if you recall from the factoring video, we're going to have to find any common factors first. So there is a common five here. So I'm gonna factor that out, and make my problem a little easier. And then I'm going to have to factor this quadratic in order to find out my get apply that zero product property. Um, using trial and error, I'm going to determine that um, the correct factorization is going to be 2a minus 3 and a plus 1. And again, we can double check this. 2a times a is 2a squared. 2a times 1 is 2a. And then minus 3a is going to be minus a. And then minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. So this does work. Now that it's in factored form, I can set my factors equal to zero. Now, five does not equal zero. That is a contradiction. So there's no solution for that. And there's no X in it, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um, 2A minus three, or A in this case, 2A minus three is equal to zero. Add the three to both sides, divide by two, I get three halves. And then my second factor, A plus one equals zero means a is equal to negative one. And so my two solutions are three halves and negative one. Now, the fact that this factor has no solution of for no value for a doesn't mean the whole problem is not solvable. It just means that you're not getting a solution, a potential solution for a from that factor. Now, if you have expressions on more than one side of your equation, of course, you need to put everything on one side of the equation because we can't do anything with it like this. We need it set equal to zero. So I'm gonna add three to the other side, or in this case, subtract three to the other side. And I'm also gonna subtract two X to the other side so that this side is blank, it's equal to zero. And I end up with X squared minus two X minus three. Now from here, I can try to factor it. Factors of three, which have a difference of two, are three and one. And I get this factorization. And then I can set each factor equal to zero. X is three. And X plus one is zero implies X is negative one. And so again, my two potential solutions are three and negative one. Now, if, my, if I have things on each side of the equation, but I also have parentheses, I can't actually proceed with everything sort of partially pre-factored. Again, I can't guess like what factors will give me four or anything. I can't leave it like that. So I'm going to have to FOIL out any parentheses, distribute, and then combine everything on one side and then refactor. So in this case, uh, z times 2z is 2z squared. z times 7 is 7z. And then I have to move the four over to the other side of the equation. 2z squared plus 7z minus four is zero. Now that it's equal to zero, now I have to uh, factor. And you can use factoring by grouping, um, or you can use trial and error, whichever that you prefer. Um, when you do this factoring by grouping, um, four times two is eight. Factors of eight that have a difference of seven are one and eight. And so I rewrite this as 8z minus z, again, because I want the 7 to be positive when I'm done. And then these two terms have a common factor of 2z. And these two terms only have a common factor of negative 1. And then z plus 4 is in common. And that leaves me with z plus 4 times 2z minus 1 here. Now that it's in factored form, then I can set z plus four equal to zero to get negative four and two z minus one equal to zero to get one half. And so those are my two solutions. But again, you, there's no shortcuts for this. You have to distribute 
you have to put everything on one side and then refactor. Now, this is an example of a cubic, but it basically works the same way. We don't have any distributing to do, but we do put everything on one side of the equation. And then we factor by grouping as we did in the previous example, combine the first two terms. I can take out an X squared and leave an X minus one. In the second expression, I can take out a three and leave an X minus one. X minus one is in common. And that leaves me with X squared plus three as my second factor. This is a sum of squares. Uh, it is impossible for X squared to be equal to negative three. So this cannot be zero. And so what I end up with is only one solution, which is X equals one. Now, as you progress in math, you will find a way to express these um, solutions for X squared equals negative three as complex numbers, but that is for a later point.